We specialize in broadcast and AV control hardware and software, offering comprehensive control over your PTC cameras, video switches, recording decks, audio processors, lighting gear, power devices, POV and studio cameras, and even cinema cameras. Our support also extends to video routers, including Blackmagic Design Video Hub, ADA Kumo routers, or even auxiliary routing on an ATEM switcher or vMix, and of course the SWP08 protocol, which is widely supported by brands such as Grass Valley, Riedel, Barnfine, k from Panasonic, and Ultrax routers from Ross. In this video, we will demonstrate how our solutions work. The process is straightforward, and this quick demo is gonna be short, but we have included some unique features I'm sure you will appreciate. The key takeaway is our versatile support for the SWP08 protocol, allowing you to seamlessly integrate it on any panel, mixed with other functionalities and used also with virtual triggers to fire other actions. Essentially, this is a universal solution. We have uh, brought a Rackfly Uno today, also a Frameshot Uno, and the quick demo is essentially that a controller such as the Rackfly Uno has a section. We have defined a section here with buttons for selecting inputs. And I'm doing that by pressing these buttons. Over here, we have the outputs of a video router. And that video router is this Riedel Micron over here. So um, that one is connected on an IP address on a network. And then we have the panel here, which has another IP address. And they are talking together, essentially. The blue pill you see here, this, this tab, is the UI of this panel, okay? So inside this panel, there is a um, so-called um, Blue Pill platform, which is the name for our fancy Linux-driven platform. So essentially, a Rackfly Uno will have that built in and the ability to talk straight over to the, uh, to the router, the SWP08 device. So you can see that I have picked a configuration here. And as I just mentioned, there are a lot of other things we support, like Kumos and Video Hubs and uh, ATEM switches, um, OptoCore, uh, Rostock is also considered a router in this case for auxiliary control, etc. But this is the one we picked today. Now, one of the things that I want to show you is that if you if, if you look at the connection, which is going to the IP address of the Riedel device, it is actually set up as what is called a configurable model. And this is a very, very popular option when you set this up. Well, if you open up here, you can see that that's the IP address of the device. This is the port number, which is I think a little bit unusual for SWP08, but nevertheless, you can set the port number and then you can name it. It has a device ID because you can add multiple of these and then they would have other numbers. There are different models you can choose from. And here you see Barn Find One is one of them. We have Grass Valley routers by name. We have uh, Ross Ultrix, k switcher, etc. But there's also the generic switches. And some of these are set up with a fixed number of um, inputs and outputs and levels but it's also possible to choose what is called a configurable model, which is this one. And if you pick that one, then the number of inputs, outputs, and levels can be set up inside the device core. We have a lot of customers who find that very attractive because it means that it's generic. It's agnostic to the particular router you have, but it's just talking SWP08 protocol with that those settings. So if we pick this, We'll see that it's just disconnecting and connecting again. And the number of inputs and outputs are set up up here in the um, configuration for the SWP08 device core. So here you can set how many inputs, if it's like 256 or whatever, and um, uh, the um, source and destination count, and also the number of levels, etc. I'll just exit this one. But I think that's a very important fact for you to remember that this is uh, flexible in this way. By the way, if you want to see the parameters, and there are really only a few behind, then you can open the parameter list, and this page will show you that for each of these routers, SWP08 supported, we have also input and output labels that can be managed. We have the routing function, of course, which is essential, and then there's also um, the take function, which is a trigger we can send to these with a destination and the source in mind. So that's kind of the, the basics and simple things that we can do with SWP08. This can be integrated on a panel like this one. As you can see, selecting output number one, I can route. I can select output number two and route something else, go back to number one, and it remembers that one. I even have a funny little feature, which is you can kind of pull these outputs together. So let's say that you have output four, uh, uh, four five, and now you can see one is also a part of it, but I'll just hold to exclude it, and then output number eight. So these are three outputs, and I can route 
input number six, six to all of these outputs. Let's just check. So notice this one. As I'm now pressing output three, we see nothing selected. It's, pr it's probably, I don't know what is routed to number three, but now it's not, it's one. If I go to four, it's six. Okay, go to five, it's also six. Go to six, then it's something else. Let's say it's three, and for five, we'll just make it three. So we see, okay, so that is six. It is three. It is three. Then seven. I don't know, but eight is also six. So <clears throat> we see the routing that I just did is now applied to those outputs. And that's a hidden little feature on our panels in general that you can enjoy. There is a paging button at the end here. So right now I have set up 20 outputs and I also have 20 inputs in this case. So I can page to multiple of these and that is defined by the number of inputs and outputs that I find inside my UI here. So if I open this one up and I add more, I can essentially just add more uh, input here in the end. Now, if we go to the second page, you can see that it already says in, but it doesn't have any value associated with it. So I'll type in 21 and then I'll just add, let me see, 22. Can I do this, please? 22. And I think, yeah, there we go, plus one. So now it is essentially, you see, now I have a, a page more. And you can also go the other way and reduce the number of inputs and outputs. So you, you can basically scale this exactly as you want. You're also able to color code these. Let's go back to the first page. So if you want your buttons here to be colored in something that identifies the channel, then it's completely up to you. You can do that exactly as you want. And you can also type in other labels in these fields. So they are now uh, labeled differently then input one, etc. And you can do the same for the outputs. You just set that up by uh, picking this one. And then you have also the levels that you can set up in this case. So if you want to change the levels and set that, you hold down this key and then you have something over here. It's called show levels. So you press that. And now you can basically pick which level you are routing and then you can exit that one again and you're back to this. Okay, so that is the panel and that can be applied to many other panels. I have a rec, um, sorry, Frameshot Uno here. So if I want to find that and integrate that with this instance of Rack, so then I can just add a panel, um, search it on the network. We'll do that there. You can also add it manually, like having it coming in as, as a model of a panel, even though you don't have it connected just yet. And then let's just see if we can find it on the network. It's right there, Frameshot Uno. I'll just pick it. And now you see it's, it, it's instantly connected, actually. And funny thing, it picks the configuration for SWP08. So sometimes you're lucky that it actually picks that out of the box um, configuration that already exists and just applies it. And it has the same configuration with inputs and outputs you can set up and it navigates in the same way. Now, these should actually be completely synchronous. Of course they should, because they are listening to the same video router over here. So we see if we pick, let's just go back to output number one. We are now on output number one on, on both of these. So if I'm routing on one panel, it is also routing on the other panel naturally. So this is basically SWP08 integrated with um, Skahoy panels. You can also use it as virtual triggers. What that means is that we can be listening to an input on SWP08 and then we can use that to trigger something else like selecting a camera on a uh, PC controller or uh, selecting something else. I mean, just any command we can send out from within Reactor, which is our software that can connect to numerous devices. We have like, I think, 400 things in this list that you can connect to anything from cameras, video switches, routers, audio processors, etc. All that can be selected. And you can control that with our panels and also with SWP08 commands that you can basically use as triggers for that. I want to end this video by showing you how we can overlay this existing configuration with settings from a different device. So first thing I want to do is to add a device that we can find on our network. We have ATEM switches here. So I'll just pick this one, press save. It should be connecting to this just shortly. So it should come up. Yep, there we go. It's connected to this guy. Then we can move into configuration tab. And now we can uh, we can see our two controllers. So we have the REC uh, Fly Uno and the Frameshot Uno. And it is the REC Fly Uno we want to work with. So we pick that configuration by selecting it. And we are now in a user section. That actually gives us ability to pick any of the buttons on this panel and overlay it with something else. Now, maybe what I want to do is to not really use the buttons uh, like output 11 or 7 to 11, and then I'll pick this 
and then I will pick from like my atom switcher. I could ideally, maybe I want to take these four, five buttons and then use them to select auxiliary sources instead, straight uh, ahead like that. Ah, okay, I think I, I selected some additional elements. I'll just do this once again. There we go. So, okay, I have five elements. I will assign them a value like input number one on the atom switcher. And then I want to batch edit because I want to change the input one to two, three, four, five on the next. So that's what I just did. And uh, they all say, okay, that's interesting. I'll just do this once again. Input like that. Oh, I need to press the done button. Great. Okay. So up here, you see now I have mixed functionality in so that I'm actually routing something on an ATEM switch apparently on that auxiliary mixed up with functionality that has to do with my real router over here. So there you see how it's possible on these panels to overlay existing configuration with something else. And it's even possible to go in here on the home screen, remove that configuration or create a custom new one like this. And then when you go back to the configuration tab, you'll notice, it's just fit in all, you'll notice that this is this is a blank slate. You can essentially just take one or multiple of these, assign functionality to them to build up your own thing. But the cool thing about the out of the box configurations you find here on the home screen is that, sorry, we have curated them to do something pretty cool because it is reading from these tables of inputs and outputs and already recognizing alternative labels, giving you colors. So many of you, you'll just lean back and you'll use these out of the box configurations we have made because that makes it so easy to apply. You saw it was a snap. I just connected to that guy and instantly I had that running distributed over the panel like this. That's the power of the Skahoy universe. This is how we control all kinds of things. And in this video, you have seen how SWP08 is applicable to our panels. Thank you for watching our video. If you find this content helpful, then please like and subscribe. We welcome your comments here or on social media and we are eager to engage with you, assist you and answer your questions you may have about our products. For further assistance, don't hesitate to contact our sales and support team.